Hi, this is Dennis Surgeon. I'm happy to speak with you again about implementing our aim, purpose, vision, and mission. My hope is that you'll understand how this gives meaning and direction and focus to the organization through our values in action. You've seen this quote before from Margaret Mead, and it reinforces the need for us to have an implementation plan and leadership starting with a small group of thoughtful, committed people to make a difference. It's important for us to prepare to think about implementation using the model for improvement. These top three questions will guide us in all of our thinking and all of our acting. We also answer these five questions about what do we contribute to the larger overarching community? What interactions create effective quality for our customers? What interactions cause us to be ineffective and what can improve the interactions and thus improve our system? We also ask about what structures generate the interactions we see. This requires engaging the whole team of teams. There's a quote here from Dr. Deming who talks about how a Japanese plant manager turned an unproductive U.S. factory into a profit venture in a short period of time. And his quote is, it's simple. You treat American workers as human beings with ordinary human needs and values. They react like human beings. It's important to think about Deming's quote of this Japanese manager who hit us with the reality that we just need to treat human beings as human beings. The focusing components that we've talked about already are the aim, the purpose, the values, the vision, and the mission. And we're going to talk a little bit further about this in the coming slides. The common aim and purpose is what we reviewed in part one. We start by engaging all the people who work here in our organization. We gather ideas from them through brainstorming about what our common aim and purpose is. We use affinity grouping to cluster together the similar ideas and identify what ideas had the most input from participants. Where we had the most agreement, we have the common purpose. We share the statement and continue a dialogue about it and use nominal voting over time if needed to change it. We do need to be thoughtful, though, about changing it too often. As far as implementing the aim and purpose and the vision and the mission with the aim and purpose set, we use a five-step model to identify our values, develop a vision and appropriate number of missions, and set objectives. We do this with the team and the leaders to use the values we've identified in step one and then create strategies to achieve those objectives. Step one is defining team values. We use brainstorming again to engage all the people who work here. We use the brainstorming to gather the values of the people in the organization. We use affinity grouping to cluster together the same values. And when we identify what's the most input that we get from people, we know what are the most important values of the organization. We share the smaller list and have a dialogue about it and use nominal voting as necessary to edit the list. We want to make sure that we keep reminding people what the values are. The second step is to develop the vision. Vision describes the desired future. It creates passion, meaning, and challenge to inspire us and creates the context for goal setting to direct us. It should be timeless, but regularly reviewed to remind us of what it is we see as our future. And all customers and stakeholders should see how it serves them. Should there be visions for the company, the departments, the teams and individuals? It's okay as long as they're not in conflict with the overarching vision. It's about we, not about me, not about my silo or my organization or my team. It's about the whole team of teams. The next step is to develop the missions. I want you to think about the missions as describing the path forward to the desired future. There's not just one on a system-wide basis. There will be many. 
and the vision directs the missions, and both of them together direct the organization's pathway to the future. Here again, it's important to engage with and talk to all the people who work here. We use brainstorming, affinity grouping, we count the input, and where we have the most input, we've identified the values of the organization in terms of the missions. Again, we share the smaller list and have a dialogue about it, and we use nominal voting to edit the list. We want to remember the structures in our system. When we think about the structures and dependencies in our system, our values shape all of the structures that we build in or that are already there. It's important for us to think about how these structures are influenced by assumptions, beliefs, and expectations, as well as the values. The people who work there bring those assumptions, beliefs, expectations, and values to the organization, and the structure influences the behaviors that follow. Behaviors are actions and language, and we need to be cognizant of those. They affect how we implement our strategy. Setting objectives is step four. Team members and leaders again set objectives together to pursue the direction. There are extensions of the aim, the purpose, the vision, the mission, and values. And we start general and get specific. We ask what are our ideas about how we could improve and move toward our aim, our purpose, our vision, and missions using our values. We challenge the team of leaders and staff to achieve the vision and ask what can management do to improve the system. Objectives can be customer-focused or process-oriented, product-oriented. They can be strategic or financial in nature. It's important for us at step five to recognize that creating the strategies to achieve the aim requires the whole team to shape the strategies in our plans. That means from frontline to the boardroom. It doesn't work if it's handed down the organization. Engagement and input with every level of the team is required. There has to be communication before, during, and after implementation. And it's important for us to remember the importance of innovators and early adopters to help us begin the process of spreading our ideas throughout the organization. Linking the strategies, goals, and objectives is the point of all this work. Thinking about the general and getting specific over time is where we have to go. We implement and follow through on strategies that come from a challenge to team members of managers, leaders, and staff to achieve the aim and the vision. Projects, processes, and people work in systems, and we need to use the PDSA cycle to evaluate the evidence and improve. This is where we link our strategies with tactics. It's the responsibilities of all of us to think about how we learned in the Red Bead experiment that a bad system will beat the best people every time. Let's improve the system together. Remember the structures in our system, the assumptions, beliefs, expectations, and values influence the structures, and the structures influence our behaviors that will lead to success or something less than success. We've got a number of references in the print materials. I urge you to pick one of these and read into it and dig deeper. Thank you very much for your interest. I'm available to help you if you want to call me or email me. Any time will be just fine. Thank you again for your kind attention.